So absolute value functions can be expressed as two linear functions. And I kind of referenced this the other day when uh, I introduced, um, when we were talking about the graphs, uh, I pointed out that these two sides are their lines, okay? And they're symmetrical. So if we only look at the left side of this graph, we could write the equation of that line, right? It's not very hard. We've got plenty of points to choose from. We could continue the graph a little bit further to see where the y intercept is. We see that it's slope is negative one, okay? Um, so when the x values are to the left of negative three, okay, or in inequality form that would yield x is less than negative three, then we could express this absolute value function as um, that would go on. When your x values are to the right of negative three, or when x is greater than negative three, we have a different but closely related linear function that represents the right side. We call that a piecewise function, okay? Um, when it has a restricted domain, that means it only applies to these x values and this piece only applies to those x values. Um, now, you don't always have to have the graph, but for this first one here, um, I want us to have the visual representation because I, I know it, it does help out, okay? So if we are trying to express the absolute value of x plus three as a piecewise function, um, here is what we need to do, and I don't know, one more way right here. Um, the same thing happens every time, and here's what it is. Okay, you're going to set this up. We write it as y equals, we put um, one of those curvy parentheses, the braces, okay, a big one because we're going to have two lines here. Okay, on the top line, we are going to put a negative and what's inside the absolute value function. But we're not going to put the absolute value bar. <coughs> we're just going to put it in parentheses. And that is in a comma. <coughs> x is less than the x coordinate of the vertex. So x is less than negative 3. I'll explain it here in a second again once we get this one down. Okay? For the second one, you're just going to drop the absolute value bars. And this one's when x is greater than negative 3. Uh, now, it doesn't matter which one. One of these needs an equal to. Okay, It doesn't matter which one. I typically put it under the second one, but it doesn't matter which one. But only one of them gets the equal to. All right? So I do want to simplify this, though. Okay, Distribute that negative in the first one. So negative x minus 3 when x is less than negative 3, and x plus 3 when x is greater than or equal to negative 3. So let me go back to my picture here um, and relate what we just wrote to here. Okay. When your x values are less than negative 3, so start at negative 3, and we're going less than, we're going to the left, what do we keep writing this line? It's got a slope of negative 1, right? And if we continue it down here, where does it intersect the y-axis? At negative 3. Okay? So that's that piece of it. The other piece, when x is greater than or equal to negative 3, to the right of negative 3, so we're going to keep taking this line, it has a positive 1 slope, and its y-intercept is positive. <coughs> okay? So really, all you have to do, you don't have to have the graph every single time. Okay? Um, every time we're going to identify the vertex, okay, identify the x coordinate of the vertex, because that's where our function is going to change. Okay, I call this the, um, uh, the changing point. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the first one is less than, so we change the signs. The second one is greater than, we keep the signs the same. All right, so let's look at some more of these. If our equation is the absolute value of x minus 4 plus 5, and we want to express that, as, express that as a piecewise function. Okay, I'm going to leave myself a little bit of space because I need to do some work, but I'm going to go ahead and start um, my final answer over here. 
Okay, x is less than is always going to be my first one. x is greater than or equal to is going to be the second one. What is the x coordinate of our vertex? Four. Okay, take what's inside the absolute value, set it equals zero, solve for x. So it's going to change at positive four. And here's why I left myself some room, because I'm going to have to do some more simplifying than I did in the previous problem. The first one, I put a negative in front of the absolute value, drop the absolute value bars. Okay, I need to distribute that negative. And I had a coefficient on the end. I didn't have a coefficient on the end in the first one. So I need to combine those like terms. So negative x plus 9 is the left side of our absolute value function. Now it's a little bit easier to crunch the numbers for the other one because we just dropped the absolute value bars. So that is x plus 1 is the equation for the right side. Okay. Um, so in the previous example, everything was just opposite, but when you have a coefficient on the end, it's going to change those numbers on the end. Okay. Your x's should always be opposite, but the numbers on the end will probably be different. Sometimes they're both positive, sometimes one's positive, one's negative. It just tips. Okay. What if we have the absolute value of 3x plus 1 minus 2? The vertex is negative one third okay for the first I'm sorry because mm, when you set 3x plus 1 equal to 0 subtract the 1 divide by 2 okay first one distribute the negative and you can start doing this quicker, but I'm trying to show my work for the time being. So the first piece, or the left side, ends up being negative 3x minus 3, when x is less than negative 1 third. And the second piece would be 3x minus 1. Okay, so once again, your x... Uh, the slopes are always going to be opposites. They may not have the same number, but they're going to have opposite signs. But the y-intercepts are not necessarily opposite. Usually, they're different numbers. Yes? There's not a reason. It could be either one of them. Okay? It could be either one of them. But the reason why we would have to have them, excuse me, <coughs> why we have to have one of them, is if neither one of them have it, then you end up with like a hole there at the bottom of the, the vertex. But just as long as one of them has it, that counts for that point. Yes? So you're looking for something like y minus 3 minus 3. Yeah. 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 Um, were you trying to solve it? I think, I think you were trying to solve it. Yeah. You were trying to take it into the vertex. But no. We're, we're just trying to get the equation of the line at this point. Okay. All right, now let's do one that's got a little bit of everything going on. Okay, got a coefficient in front, got a coefficient on the x, we've got h and k. All right, so first of all, let's find our vertex, 1 third x minus 1 equal to 0, add the 1, so 1 third x equals 1, we can solve that by multiplying by 3, okay, yes, technically dividing by 1 third is the same thing, but really, when you're talking about trying to do it without a calculator, multiplying by 3 is better, okay, so... Um, x is less than 3, x is greater than or equal to 3. Alright, now, be very, very careful with this one because the 
there's already a negative 2 right there. So you have to put a negative in front of the negative 2. <coughs> Because what we've been doing is we've been distributing a negative, <coughs> so there's already a negative there, so we still have to distribute another negative. So really, negative times a negative 2 is a positive 2. So that's 2 thirds x minus 2 plus 6, so 2 thirds x plus 4. No, no, no. You only, when it's multiplication, <coughs> you don't, because if you distribute it to both of them, then you're doing a negative times a negative, which ends up being positive. So you just do negative times negative 2 gives you positive 2, and then distribute the positive 2. Okay, for the second one, we keep everything the same. And we just distribute. Negative two thirds x plus two plus six. So negative two thirds x plus eight. Now, like with everything, you can check this with your calculator. Okay, <clears throat> especially this last one because it, it looks really weird. I I I can see your reason for for doubting that. Okay, so what you need to do is you need to type in the original equation in your y equals the original absolute value equation. Okay, make sure you put the absolute value. Okay, <clears throat> one third x minus one, close your parentheses, plus six. And then in the other two, you're going to put your two linear equations. Press graph, there's the absolute value function, and it may look like it's not doing anything, and then all of a sudden this other line appears, okay, and then this other line appears. So as long as you don't see multiple lines, then you're okay, okay? This is that's correct because those two lines just overlap. Um, this extra part, remember, we talked about restricting the domain. So the first one that graphed, it was supposed to stop. piecewise function matches the absolute value. 